So we're still waiting for our brand new microphones, the one I had last week or the past couple weeks, is a temporary from the company that's giving us the new ones. And somebody dropped it and it's broke, so now I'm using this. And the replacement's coming out of Killian's paycheck. <laughs> so thank you all for coming today. I, can you hear me okay? You want me to lift something up? Is that what you're saying? Oh, louder. Got you. No? How's this? <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right, we have a few announcements, and uh, but, but again, we changed gears today. So we we're going to have a presentation on the community funds. And now we had an opening, so I thought this is the perfect time to show you all the pictures that we have, of the renderings. Some of them are a little odd because they're kind of black and white, uh, so you'll have to use your imagination a little bit. Um, but we're not here just to see my vacation pictures, but I just do want to point out. This is, this is Indian Head Ledge up in the Adirondacks, and this is the fall. Um, this, it's straight down after this ledge, by the way. I'm terrified of heights. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm here behind me is my son, and, and uh, it was part of our 46 high peaks. That pointy one to the right, that is saw teeth, and we had done that last fall. So that's, I don't know, about 4,600 feet. Anyway, it's not about me, it's about the community. Okay, uh, you know what? I do want to give out a star today from somebody who has no idea it's coming. I love these moments. So, Tony, can you come up here? He was shaking his head when I, he's like, why are they going to become the event center? It's so weird. So everyone, I would like you to meet Antonio. This is Tony. So Tony's been with us for a little while. And Tony, I don't even know what his title is anymore because he does so much. But uh, he does work utilities in our kitchen. And when I first met him, he was taking care of all the dishes, putting things away, making sure the kitchen's clean. But he has some aspirations to do a little more, and he's been not only brilliant at what he does and such a hard worker, but he's been picking up quite a few shifts as a cook. So, yes, exactly. And, and, and the first time I witnessed this, and I'm sure there was more occasions, was during um, one of our January storms where we were stuck here overnight, right? And I was in the, the assisted living kitchen, and there's that whole kitchen servery there, and, and Tony was there preparing food, and, and he had such a big smile on his face, and just so energetic, and just really the culture and the impression we want for all of our community members, but especially our folks in assisted living. So, Tony, you're doing a great job. So thank you for, thank you. Thank for wanting to continue to grow and, and actually taking that step and, and being such a great worker. So, it's a start. So, did you have a speech prepared? Did... <laughs> Maybe next time. Okay. Well, I'm sure you'll be up here again. So, thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That, that, that was a great moment. Okay. So, we're going to have oh, I, a couple quick announcements for me, and then we'll have some others. So we have mentioned in the past that uh, Melissa, who has been our financial coordinator for so long, she's been doing all of her billing. Um, Melissa's taking on a different role, and we have a brand new biller. Her name is Tabitha Fox. So if you have a chance to meet her, um, please do so. But if you have any questions on your, 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 uh, your monthly statements, um, don't hesitate to reach out to Tabitha. She is just a wonderful personality. She's already picked it up very quickly. Uh, very kind soul, and, um, and and she'll be great to, to work with. So if you have any questions, just go to go to Pamela and say I'd like to speak to Tabitha, or give her a call, and she'll be able to help you out with with your uh, with your monthly statement. Bill. Yes. She, what are her hours? She, oh, her hours are Monday through Thursday nine to two. <laughs> Monday through Thursday nine to two. I remember that. Did you see that? <laughs> So she's not here on Fridays, so you're not allowed to have questions on Fridays. <laughs> okay, Lisa? We'll give you an answer. My, I'll give you an answer. It might not be the right one. So weird. 
All right, is this working? Yeah. I just have two quick things. I'm hoping that you've all been to the Oak Room this week and noticed that we've expanded our menu. Yes. yes. So I'm hoping we kind of added a few up couple options on there to make sure we can handle that. So um, for those of you who haven't, if you come down to the Oak Room, there are two additional um, options every night. You can get a grilled chicken breast every night with a choice of two sides or a broiled salmon with a choice of two sides. You can also make them an entree salad. So you could get a broiled salmon salad every night and get like a soup for your starter, or you could get a grilled chicken salad every night. So we have added that in the Oak Room. Um, it's, we've had a couple questions just to clarify. When we have a buffet, they will not be available and it's not um, for Sunday brunch. It's just for the dinner meals in the Oak Room. Okay? Is it available for takeout? It's available for takeout, but we haven't added it to the form because there's so many options. But if you call, you can um, request it through the phone. Thank you. Okay. Um, the other thing, um, as you know, we've gotten our new um, Volante point of sale system in our um, throughout our all of our dining venues here in the independent side. So thank you for bearing with us as we're working out the kinks and figuring out what works, what doesn't calling tech support a lot and figuring that out. But with that, there is a web-based version where you can log in and track your account. So I wanted to mention it today. We're gonna to be rolling it out in the next couple of weeks. So we wanted to mention it today. We're hoping, it, uh, we are hoping or definitely, Joe? We're, we're, we're definitely after coffee hour, next coffee hour. So if you want to stay, we're going to be helping you get logged in. Killian's the point person on this, really. And helping you get logged in, we're going to show you what it looks like, how to navigate it, how to utilize that. Yay. So that'll be great so you can track every day, check on your balance, and then let us know um, if there's anything we need to change, fix, update, and things like that. Okay? All right. You can still get a slip anytime you want. So you can go to the bistro and ask for your slip. At the end of dinner, you can still get a slip. We stopped the automatic printing because a lot of people didn't want their slips, but just ask your server and they can get a slip. Okay, so if you don't want to go on every day and look at your balance, that's always available through anybody in dining. Good question. Any more questions on that? There was a little bit of time where we had a, a flood in the system and it wasn't working. It should be back working now. So if you're continuing to have issues with quilt, I'm sorry, the question was she was having a couple of issues where the quilt orders were going through. Um, if you're still having issues, let us know, but hopefully we've resolved that. Okay, I do have one more thing I forgot about. We're floating an idea here, so no promises, no guarantees. But we kind of want to hear your feedback, whether it's now or if you want to tell us in the hallway later. We know there is a need, want for an additional pub day. Yes. So, <laughs> we have a couple options. We're going to think about doing it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Or if we really love Thursdays, then we would stay Monday, Thursday. So those are our two options that we would have. So think about those and tell us if you'd prefer to have the three days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or stick with the two days and keep it Monday, Thursday when the bistro's open. Any questions on that? We're gonna process. Saturday would be very difficult to commit to every Saturday. We don't have a bartender to work Saturdays. We have a willing participant for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yes, Mr. Will there be bistro dinners Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if you do it that way, as there is Monday, Thursday? No, the venue would stay the same, so then it would be, Monday would be tied with the bistro night, Wednesday would be tied with a buffet, which does have perks of parties and special events and fun things that we can all tie in together. And then Friday is great because then we're open for fish fry night and um, things like that too. So. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah
As of right now, it wouldn't change the dining portion of it. Because right now, you can get bistro food Monday, Thursday. Correct. That's so really I good. I just wanted to know if it's Wednesday, uh, Friday, too. No, it would be just a happy hour Friday and then Oak Room. For, cur for right now, we're still looking to expand opening the bistro more mm -hmm. in the, you know, Maybe if Tony keeps up the good work. <laughs> okay? All right, is it back to you? Elsa? Elsa? Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for those that attended Sip Suds and Sweets last night. That was a really nice event. Um, Wendy wanted me to mention Market in the Square did have some goodies that they, some extra goodies they had. So those are in the back of the room, so you're welcome to enjoy those. And I did want to announce we do have a couple of basket winners that haven't been claimed. Um, Mike McLean. Anne Marie McShay and Alona Klein. So if you haven't picked up your basket, um, please after coffee hour go see Pamela. Um, you can retrieve that. So that was fun. We had some box run winners. Um, I'm going to be putting out a memo in everyone's mailbox um, today. So next week, Wednesday, April 24th, from 11:30 to 1 o'clock. We're going to have a table set up right outside the common area from the British Swim School of Buffalo. So I'll tell you a little bit about that. So Fox Run, um, we have a staff member that works primarily over in the health center. Her name is Ellen Cannon. She is our speech therapist. She's a local Orchard Park resident. Her and her husband have purchased the franchise British Swim School of Buffalo, and they approached us about using our pool for some swim lessons. So it's, it's, it's brand new for them, it's really brand new for the area. So we've agreed, um, so they're gonna be here next Wednesday to enroll and ask, answer questions, concerns. But once they get this up and running, they'll be using our pool Mondays and Wednesdays between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. and then Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So they come with their own lifeguard, their own pool deck manager, and then who's ever teaching the school. They will, in, in time, which is a benefit for all of you, offer what's called aqua active classes, which will be nice. So that we're excited to kind of add to our fitness program a little bit, offer some more um, water aerobic type classes for all of you. So um, that will go in your mailboxes, some more information, and you can see me directly with any questions or concerns. And I believe the pool is back open today? No, tomorrow. tomorrow. The pool will be back open tomorrow. For everyone and that is all I had oh I'm sorry Becky um, Becky is going to be starting a 30-day water challenge in May I know we're starting to bring back a lot of wellness programs and different things like that so the goal for that program is to consume more water especially heading into the summer months so she's going to be putting out details on that and you can see her for more information any questions for me yes are they, is this aqua class donating any money? So the aqua, the aqua classes will be free for everyone to use here at Fox Run. Okay. So they're not, the group is not giving us any money to use the pool? No. Okay. That's fine. Was well, there any more than one basket winning? I already picked up one, but you mentioned my name again. If you picked it up this morning, that, that, then that was your basket. Then you're all set. I took your other one, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, then I'll pass it back to Bill. How's this look? Can you hear me okay? Okay, so I have this. I have this. I have this. I need a harmonica. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> my hope today was to, it, we, we, let me step back, we, we've had quite a few um, of our, our neighborhood lunches, actually we have one left to do, and um, I think they've gone very well. We've been able to iron out some of the, uh, um, some of the, the, the details of our expansion. I haven't been able to show you pictures because they're all here, so my hope today was really to kind of go through some of the, the, what I've already shared at the neighborhood luncheons, show you some pictures, answer any questions, but just really to keep you in the loop and then visually give uh, a bit of an impact of what, what we think this is gonna look like. So I'll start with why are we expanding? 
And then we, I showed these slides last summer when I, we first announced we're going to be doing an expansion. So I'll just quickly go through these. So we had a long-range strategic planning committee get together. And, and our purpose is, well, there, there's a couple purposes. My job is to operate this community the best that myself and our leadership team can for all of you. But I also have another part to my job, and that's the plan for the future, right? So it's, it's about giving you the, the, what you need and, and the best amenities that we can, but at the same time, I have to think about that next generation that are gonna be moving into Fox Run, um, that are on our wait list right now or yet to be on our wait list. And I like to make this comparison when you, because some people think, well, what, if, what about me? I don't care about the people who are moving in in a couple years. We started talking about this before COVID. Since that conversation, we've, pro we've had well over 100 people move in. So that next wave is already here. So if you think of it that way, many of you in this room who have only been here a couple of years, you're the next generation. And then in the next couple of years, there'll be those folks moving in as well. So I have to think about how can we attract those people to keep Fox Run healthy, financially viable, because that impacts all of you today as well. So the one thing, I, I love this, this little, can you, everyone see the red dot? Yeah. 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 So this line is resident revenue. Here's your service fees. They do increase every year. And here's the cost to operate. It's going up. And this gap, which was very wide here, is getting closer. So part of the reason for expanding is to bring in more folks to widen this gap again. Because we can't, the cost of operating is so much greater than what we're passing along to you. So, and, and we want to keep your service fees reasonable and manageable for all of you and for the next generation. So by bringing in more folks and expanding Fox Run, that does help that. But there's more to it. Um, I have a question. Sure, and, and I, because this is our only mic, I'll be repeating all the questions. If I don't, yell at me. Yes. Okay, on that last slide, communities yeah. that do update yeah, end up struggling? It's, it's, it's that it's, don't it's, update, yes. Okay. You read that really fast. Yeah. That was great. So yes, this is that, that companies that, communities that do not update end up struggling. Okay. I'm sorry, I just skimmed over this because I presented it before. So I'll, I'll hit these, piece, these pieces. It's important for us to keep updating and improving. Communities that do not, my apologies, update, end up struggling because when you walk in the door, we have that wow factor. It's a beautiful community. And if you, if you become complacent and you sit on that in 20 years, now I've been doing, I've been here for 14 years now. If we hadn't changed, it would, be four, it would look old. It'd look great to me because I come here every day, but that new wave is gonna say, it looks old, and then you need to really spend a lot of money to update it. So if you can update as you go, which we've done, and then include it as part of an expansion project like this, we can really accomplish a lot. Do you want to go into uh, slideshow mode? Or? I don't, oh, okay. actually, because I'm going to be zooming in okay. at, at some point. And, um, oh, we have another question. Yes. Yes, who had a question? I was going to ask why you don't expand, expand the slides so we could read them. So the, re the reason for that, <laughs> sorry. Well, it's, so why? So I'll go to the slideshow, and it's really not going to be any bigger. Well, I guess it will. Right. But then you miss things apparently. Oh, you know what? I, I had, a, I had them. So it, it is, it is a little bigger. But when I get, when I get to the actual pictures. Some of them are so small, I can't zoom in in this mode. Okay. So, so bear with me, I'm just gonna do it the old-fashioned way. So we really want to improve our amenities. Um, it's not just bringing in more people, but this gives us that opportunity to make the fitness center better for you, to improve our equipment, to improve the dining venues, and to add some cool things that we currently don't already have. And also, we want to listen to the market. Right now, we have 80 people who have given us 10% deposits that are waiting to move into Fox Run. They can't because we're full. So how are we expanding? We are going to increase our number of independent living units. There'll be 61 net new apartments, and there'll be eight new patio homes. So a total of 69 new units will, will be coming online. Many of those will be couples. So if you think of numbers of people, if we fill all those today, then we'll probably have roughly 90 new residents moving in, all on the same day. 
There'll be no changes to our health center. We actually did a renovation and expansion of our health center back, which was completed back in 2019. And the renovations will allow us, as I mentioned, add new amenities and improve our existing amenities as well. One thing I want to, it's a question I know will come up, and it's about our health center. A lot of folks say, if you're going to add this many people, will there be enough beds for us if we need them? The answer is yes. So in order for us to complete a project like this, we have to do an actuarial study. And, we, and what they do is they look at the ratio of need in our health center based on the number of folks who live independently. If you look at that ratio, even with this expansion, we're higher than almost all other CCRCs in New York State. Right now, we're full. For example, assisted living, we're full. I think everyone kind of knows that. And at times, our skilled nursing is full. More than half of the residents that are currently in our health center are direct admissions from the outside. They're not contract holders like all of you. As we get closer to completing this expansion, the folks that we bring in from the outside will diminish. And at some point, the way this model works is the health center will be all yours. And that we're filling empty spaces right now that we wouldn't be filling because not enough of you have a demand. But we'll be, we have to manage those beds then. So we'll reduce the number of people from the outside, which will provide more space for all of you if you need it. Bill. Yes. How are you going to compensate for the gap in income that those people pay? Great question. The question was, how are we going to compensate for the gap in income? Because the folks that come in from directly from the outside are paying $15,000 a month for skilled nursing. And now we're going to be replacing them with, with folks like you. That gap will be covered by the new revenue we get from these 69 new units in independent living. So if you look at the margins, I'm, I'm getting into finance here, of 69 new IL units, the operating expense only goes up a fraction. So we'll bring in all this revenue and we'll, we'll hire 10, 12 people. This is just off the top of my head. We, we won't, it won't be the amount of impact, the impact of, of operating costs that we're seeing now with the current campus. So there'll be overhead, there'll be staffing, but the margin's so much greater that it'll help us cover that gap. Does that make sense? Yep. Thank you. What about the mortgage on all this building? So, great question. The question is, how do we pay for it? Well, it, it's, we don't know that yet, but we're oh, guessing. Yeah. It, it, the, the market's a little tricky right now. The bond market is, is not all that friendly today, but we expect it will be. When you build a campus like this, the project is going to be roughly not just building costs, but lawyers, architects, developers, all that will be probably north of $55 million. That kind of money, you have to do a bond financing, typically. That's why I say I'm not sure yet, because be, could, there could be a combination of bank financing. So when you borrow that money, they offer municipal bonds to the public. And there's, um, there's commercial outfits like Vanguard who are going to purchase those bonds as part of their portfolio. It creates, essentially, a long-term mortgage for us. And part of that operating cost will be interest on the mortgage and we'll be able to cover that in our financial model. So we, we have a development company that has run all the projections for us. It's essentially we're taking on more debt and we're going to have a larger mortgage payment. So yes, the cash flow will be there with the addition of these new units to cover the mortgage, to cover the operating cost, and enough left over to keep the, that gap of service fees to widen it so that we're not increasing your service fees by 4.5% like we did two years ago. Our goal is to keep that back to where it used to be. A few specifics, uh, looking at our IL units, um, they're going to be the same, essentially, styles and sizes that we have now. Uh, Mary Lou would kill me. Right now we have 25 different styles of, of apartments and patio homes. If we add more, her head would spin off her shoulders more than it already does now. Um, but they're, they're, there's going to be tweaks to those apartments. So we actually looked at um, the architectural layout. Many of you have got some of those sheets of paper when you moved in. I have a, a, a peach apartment, and here's the layout. Well, we're changing some of those things based on your feedback over the years, such as doorways, bedrooms and closets and bathrooms that the doors bang into each other. We're going to have pocket doors. Um, I love to pick on Mary Lou for this one. She hates seeing a toilet when you walk by a bathroom. 
So those are going to be shifted over so you see a sink instead. Um, Matt had quite a bit of input based on your feedback on the washer and dryer. The stackables really aren't working for everyone. And so how did we make up for storage space? Because of without stackables, all of that is being include, incorporated into our design. So it's really going to be the same styles and sizes. There might be some nuances, like a pair might be eight square feet more or less than the current pair, uh, that, that kind of thing. Patio homes will be the same thing. Um, maybe a different traffic flow. Uh, I, I don't, I don't trying to think, Matt, maybe you can help me. You won't be walking into your dining room from the garage anymore. There'll be kind of a little separate space to walk in. Um, I, I thought that was, that was incorporated. And I'm sorry, I get something here. And we're not including any of the smallest units like the, um, um, like the Apple. It's mostly where the demand is right now, and those are larger units. <coughs> Amenities, we really want to focus on wellness and improve gathering spaces. Uh, there's going to be a larger wellness office with a connecting exam room. I'll show you a picture of it. We're going to have a massage room, a new salon, all in the same area, a new creative arts room. If anyone uses our creative arts room now, it's really a boardroom slash creative arts room. You can watch TV in there, you can play Wii. We're going to have an actual craft room uh, that is designated, designated just for painting and, and, um, and whatever crafts that Nicole is, is going to come up with. And it's going to be a larger space as well. It, it's actually my office plus another couple offices, so that's where it's going. I'll show you. Um, all of our resident services will be moved to the same location right now. Lori's upstairs, and um, Nicole and Jackie are over here, and Allison's back there, and we're going to put them all in the same area. Mary and Nettie are over here. We're all going to be in the same, what we're going to call our wellness suite. We're going to expand our fitness center, and we're going to add new and more fitness equipment. We're also going to have a larger pub and bar with expanded seating, and I'll show you a picture of that. There'll be a new card room and a library on the first floor. We're going to create a theater with comfortable seating, a theater of 20. Uh, right now you're watching movies in here, and it's a giant cavern. Um, it'll be a little more intimate with comfortable seating. Uh, there'll only be room for 20 seats, so we may have to have multiple showings. Right now I think our movies, occasionally we have 20. Most of the time, it's only a handful, so we'll be able to accommodate that. We're going to expand seating in our bistro and our dining room, and there'll be a new art gallery. So let's look at some pictures. This is just kind of my placeholder to, to start a new set of slides. But let's talk about the apartments and patio homes. So this is why, this is why I did this. Because uh, oh. I can zoom in a little bit and on, on certain areas. So this is a, a sky view of the campus. Okay, so this is right here with this, you know, maybe I'll use this thing. This is our entrance to um, Big Tree Road, or 20A, and this is the California Road entrance. Um, it's hard to see because of the coloring. Obviously, these are trees. This is our wetland over here. Um, here's the patio homes in the front. Here's the patio homes in the back. This, these are the Arbor View apartments. We are right here in this building. This is the parking lot out this window. So I'll just kind of give you a visual here and then I'll show you some pictures. Um, right, there's the parking lot. Okay, right about here, we're gonna have a wing that goes out into the parking lot. This will be our largest wing. This is the south entrance. We're gonna come right up the south and turn this way. And then this wing here will have a, a turn this way. So we'll be a courtyard right here. And um, one smallest wing, medium sized wing, large wing here. So, and, and, oh, and then the, the patio homes, this is our health center entrance, are going to be out in this field right here. There'll be eight right out here. So there'll be four buildings. And we can't really go any further because once you cross this line, you're now in wetland. It'll make more sense with more pictures, trust me. Will you be putting in more of those sheds for cars? So no, we're, we're, right now it's not in the design. I asked our architect to go, but the question was carports. So right here, this is the south entrance. This is the south wing now. 
right here are existing carports. Those are going to go away. I know that was the big thing in the last presentation. Quite a few of you were upset you're going to lose your carports. Um, I've asked the architect to look to see if we can put some over here. So they're working on that now, and, but we have to consider cost as well. Um, our goal was not to invade green space. So the only other space we can invade is parking lot space, and that includes the existing car, the existing carports. Okay, so this is kind of breaks down a little. This gray area again is our building that I just showed you from the last picture. Um, our common space, red will be the new wings. So up here is the garden area. Um, wing one, two, and three. I said it's going to create a parking area and some green space around this little courtyard. There go Mona lives right here. <laughs> right? And then the blue will be our new patio homes. And there'll be a little driveway to go to those and get more green space. I couldn't get pictures in time from our landscape architect. But the one thing I want to assure you is with this, we're going to create outdoor gathering space. So, for example, this wing right here, this is our new Commons parking lot. In between the building and this wing, there's going to be um, some seating areas, um, maybe a fire pit. Here's the bocce courts. Those, of course, will stay, but we've narrowed the space, and there'll be some, some gathering areas where you can sit and relax and meet with friends. Um, this is going to be a really special new area over here because there's going to be a pergola here. There'll be an outdoor gas grill. Again, a fire pit, some, some outdoor seating, so folks will want to come and gather together um, in an outdoor space, which is great for Buffalo because it's perfect year-round. Yeah. <laughs> and then way up here, so I if I can zoom in a little. So right up here is where our garden is, and then this rectangle is the existing um, pavilion or picnic shelter. We're going to create a pickleball court right out in the grassy area, but it's going to be multi-use. Now that everyone wants to play pickleball, um, so we're going to be able to attach poles, take down the net, attach poles, and put an awning over it. So if we want to have a dining, um, special dining venue or an event outside, we can do that, or we can host events. And with that, there'll be storage areas here, grilling space, so we don't have to drag a gas grill all the way out there. Um, and then again, more gathering space and more things to do. This is just kind of another just view to show you what it's going to look like. You, it's impossible to see, but again, existing wings. This, this shows you how many apartments are going to be on each floor. So if I zoom in a little and slide this over, it's, there's a lag, so it's really slow. You can see right here that there'll be a one bedroom, one bedroom den, two bedroom. So this will be the layout. You'll be entering the new wing from this area here by our entertainment area, which I'll explain later. And there'll be a hallway that turns, and you'll see how the, the apartments are laid out. Uh, so I'm going to explain what a half story is now. You ready? Yeah. Ready. This, is, this is the first floor. So you'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12 units. First floor and second floor will have this middle hallway with 12 units each on both sides. The third story is the half floor. They're full size walls, they're not, they're not half, half ceilings, but instead of 12, there'll be six. And they'll be recessed in a little more toward the middle and they'll be dormers, which I'll show you a picture of. That's where the half story is. I learned a lot from all of this. Yet another just image. This one is just shows a little bit more of the colorful landscaping we're going to add. Um, it's really hard to depict what this is going to look like, but we, with this landscape architect isn't somebody who does lawn care that has an idea of what plants should go where. This is somebody who has a degree and does this for a living. Um, I don't remember, Matt, are they from Connecticut as well? 
Uh, it's an outfit from Connecticut, and they have quite a bit of design. It's, they're engineers, actually, so it's really remarkable some of the things they've been able to, to pull together. Here is a rendering. This is the south entrance. So the south used to go out where this wing is going to be. Instead, it's going to come off of an angle. Right in this area where there's that the north lounge, there'll still be a lounge there, but there'll also be outdoor space. So you can go out, out onto a second floor patio. Um, the walkway will look a little different. Parking's going to be very different. In order to do all this, we, we have another engineering firm that that's all they do are parking lots. No. Because we need a certain number in order to, to get uh, town of worship park approval. And um, they want to be able to, they had ideas of putting them right against people's patios. We didn't like that idea, so they have a blend of where these spaces are going um, so that we can accommodate all of your vehicles. And this is what I was talking about for the half story. It's kind of a dormer effect. Um, and again, just to give you a sense of what that looks like. So now, on the second, well, on, on both floors, yes. the second, there are no balconies? There are, right here. So, oh, a so common this is, balcony. Is, I'm talking about each of these. So, so hold on, I'll, I'll explain it. Okay. So there's an apartment here with its own balcony, an apartment here, which is a larger one. This apartment's balcony will be on the end here. So they're not all on the same side. It's just the way the design works. And then, and then this will be an L shape, which goes that way. And they will also have a similar look with those balconies. The difference on the other side is you're not going to see this. You're going to see this. So this is the comments. This is our main entrance. We're all in this room right here. This is the back side of what a half story looks like. The other way, facing the health center in the woods, that's where their balconies are. And again, some of them will be, be one facing here, um, a couple here, and, and again, this is just a rendering. They will all have, it, all have balconies. All right, let's talk about Let's talk about the inside. Amenities, community building and, re and renovations. This is so hard to see. This is what, this is the comments. So bear with me, I'll explain where everything is. And I can zoom out. I'll, I'll be taking this by section with our next slides. So event center right now, I'm standing right here. Um, this is the, the, the vestibule, Pamela sits right here. These are all the administrative offices. This is today. <laughs> Fitness center is right here. Here's the pool. The mail room is right here. Gift shop. Here's all the things that we, we, we currently have and what we know. I would like to focus for a second on the most dramatic change will be right here. There's the pool table, it's right outside here. Um, and then there's the fire doors. Here is um, Mary and Nettie's office. This is Nicole and Jackie right here. And there's all the storage back here, creative arts room. That's today what it's going to look like. And again, I'm going to break this down into sections. What you see to the left is just a comparison of today to tomorrow. No longer offices here. This is the creative arts room. My office is right there. I'm going to lose that. Um, the salon is going to be over here. Fitness center will expand out onto the grass area. And I'll show you pictures of that. The pool's not changing. Um, our dining room, let's see. I'm just going to cover this quickly, and I'll show you expansions of it. Um, event center right here. This wall is going to go away, and there'll be a stage right here behind this wall, uh, which means your seating can go up to here now, so we can add uh, accommodate more folks, and you'll be able to see us better because we'll be about a foot higher. This, the pool table was right about here. We're going to move it into this is the new pub area, and this is going to be a new gathering space. So the bar will be right here, and when the bar is not open, we don't want to just waste the space. So there'll be tables. 
this will be a fireplace. It'll be more gathering, again, gathering space for many of you who just want to come and sit down. And, and will they be serving meals there, like so in the summer? You will be able to take your meals from the bistro to the pub, yes. Will they be serving? I don't believe so. It is possible, though. We haven't ironed out the logistics of that. But the goal and is... What so the happens to the koi pond in outdoor dining? I'll get to that. So the question was, what happens to the koi pond in the outdoor dining? Koi pond is going to stay, outdoor dining is going to stay, but it's going to be reconfigured a little bit, and I'll show you that. Um, one of the things, oh, here's the theater. Um, this will be card room, library. This is really neat, and I'll show you pictures of it. This will be all glass, and there'll be seating outside here, and there'll be some computers here. It'll be easier, like I said. So the fire doors were right about here. Now they're down right next to the wood shop. This was all storage. Poor Matt has no storage anymore. We're gonna get rid of that and give it all to you for seating. There'll be TVs on the wall. Um, this will be a nice get, a, a nice destination for folks. This is what I'm most excited about, and that's a fresh market. So the current pub. One of the things that we saw when we visited the, um, one particular community in, um, in Connecticut uh, called Elon Park, they had a fresh market, which my eyes were drawn to it. It, it wasn't a place where you can buy snacks and t-shirts and, and um, greeting cards. That's gonna be over here next to Pamela, that, the greeting cards and the t-shirts. This will be dry food, um, prepared food, hot soups, fresh bread. It'll be a way you can go in if you don't really have time to go into the bistro, or, and same thing for staff. You just wanna grab a, a salad, a fresh prepared salad that day. You can grab it, and um, again, I'll show you some more pictures from one of these cases. Right back here is where, I'm gonna zoom in on this a little bit. You'll be able to walk in from this side there's a little table seating area right here. Maybe get your soup here, serve yourself. You can get your salad here. There'll be breads on top of this, this table. Those glass windows will still be here so you can walk by and see what's going in. Nobody wants to look at the bathroom door while you're looking at food, so we're reconfiguring the, the entrance to the restroom right here. It used to be this way, now it's gonna be this direction. So let's blow some of this up a little. Let's, let's make it bigger and easier to follow. Uh, okay, let's start with the fitness area. Our existing fitness center will have a new room attached to it, and this will be an area where Becky can run classes. She can have yoga, she can bring in chairs and have seated um, stretching exercises. This will be all windows on this side looking out into that beautiful courtyard, um, which has that huge oak tree, and now we have um, the, the pools over here. They'll, you won't be able to see the patio from the pool, but there's a, some great, some beautiful flower gardens you'll be able to see this way. It'll bring in natural lights. We'll be able to have a TV here so we can do programming if Becky's not available. This is the current cut through with the awning. It's not gonna be a cut through anymore. It's just gonna be a hallway. It's going to be a full, you know, four-season way for you to get to the apartments without going out to the elements. But there'll be plenty of windows so we can get light all the way through to this, this exercise area. The current fitness center is going to have all equipments, and we're going to have new equipment. One of the things we looked at is something called HUR, H-U-R, and it's pneumatically driven exercise equipment. So let's say you have a leg press where you sit down and and uh, Dick Leonard is sitting there and he's exercising his legs. First of all, he swipes his badge so that the, the equipment knows Dick Leonard is sitting in that seat. It will adjust to his proper height and his knees. So if he can lift 20 pounds with his legs, it's gonna remember that next week when he comes back. And it remembers what his, where, where, he was, where he left off and he'll be able to continue his workout. Right now, it's very difficult to run on a treadmill or use an exercise bike while Becky has a class going. So that's why we thought we need to separate this. These, these will still be glass windows, so you can see what's going on in both, but you'll be able to use the equipment while somebody else is, is, uh, is having a class. 
So now you walk across the hallway and you go into the new wellness area. So this is, will be a little seating area. This is kind of the spa area where we have a massage table. We can bring in a massage therapist. And then we have a bigger salon that we have now that will replace the one that's, that's over here that's going to be um, demoed. And then this will be Lori's office, a wellness office here, and there'll be a, a private exam room. So right now, poor Lori is using the space she has now, and she's using the card room. But if we want to bring the podiatrist in, or even Dr. Cooker, and if you're using mobile primary, they'll be able to use this space as well. This creative arts room, this is, I just love saying, my office, Melissa's office, and Robin's office are all going to become a larger space than the current creative arts room. There will be a sink, there will be plenty of storage, there'll be great natural light, so you can work on your projects. And then all of Allison and her team will be down here. So this will be activity staff. Uh, I don't know exactly how it's going to be configured. I assume this will be um, um, Nicole and Jackie. And then this will be Mary and Nettie on this side. And Allison will be right here. So her whole team will be in the wellness suite area. And of course, we need marketing rooms. Um, they're called discovery rooms. So if Mary Lou wants to show a glossy picture of our new, some of our new units, She'll have this space with access out the door like she does now. And then Pamela's staying where she's at. The gift shop will be smaller and right here, and it'll have your t-shirts and your greeting cards and, 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 and things like that. The mail room, it will be at least twice the size, and it, instead of the pull in and back out, it'll be a U-shaped, so you can act, you can go in and out with easier traffic flow, and you'll have your US mail here and your internal mail below it rather than going back and forth from side to side. The existing gift shop will become the art gallery and on the back side of the art gallery, the hallway to the locker rooms, this will be um, what we're going to call it scooter storage. So rather than have a log jam of, of walkers and scooters outside of the oak room, God forbid there's an emergency, you have to navigate all that, we're going to have it off to the side. Um, and then staff can help um, get your equipment as you need it. So this is where I really wanted to zoom in. So this is everything I just showed you. So this, bear with me, I'm going to try to... This is a rendering that the architect came up with. This will be the inside of the, the new exercise room for floor exercises. And you can see it'll be all glass with doors going out into the courtyard. This is just an inside look at, um, at where the, the actual fitness equipment is currently. Those windows right here are gonna look out into that other room I just showed you. Just another, whoa, another view of the exercise equipment. And I don't know what's going on. Oh, just another. Don't you love these gray looking people that are on this? All right, so let's go to this side. And try to show. Oh, boy. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's very, very sensitive. I don't know why that happens like that. Don't even ask me. Okay, anyway. I was hoping that here you could see creative art, so right, you see my mouse moving. This is just a, a picture of what the, the creative arts room is going to look like. So you, you can see above and below, um, there's a sink there with storage cubbies all over the place. This will be an entrance to the fitness center where you can put your, your, um, your jacket and your shoes in, in these boxes. And that's all it's going to let me show you. So let's go to this other rendering. There's that same lady who loves beige. And that's the exercise room and just another picture of the equipment. All right, so let's move on to dining and entertainment. All right, so here is the dining room. 
is going to expand. So right now, the dining room ends where this line is, and this space is the existing patio outside, the, outside of the acorn room. So that patio does not get used very often. It does occasionally. The patio over here is where everybody um, gathers. So we're keeping that, and there'll be, so this will make our dining room bigger to accommodate more folks, and there'll be access to that patio from this way and this way. There'll be glass windows so you'll be able to see what's going on out there. And it's not just going to be, oh, and, and notice how the lines of the dining room are, are straight. There's currently pieces that jut in with a small rectangle, um, like the entrance to the acorn room. We're going to push that out to the hallway. This will give us another table. Uh, right here, there was a culinary center that we really don't use. That's going to go away and uh, allow us to have more seating. We're gonna, first and foremost, the message was loud and clear, we will do a better job with soundproofing the dining room. <laughs> I, I can tell you firsthand, I was at a marketing lunch and I was sitting underneath where the, that wooden structure is, and so I was having a conversation some, with somebody, with a prospective resident, and I was nodding as if I could hear what they said. I didn't know anything they said. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to soundproof that, and it's not just going to be a big open area like this is with tables, because that's not comfortable. That feels like you're at a you know, the local VFW with tables. We're going to break it up and make it feel like a restaurant. So some of the things we've seen in other communities, and we're going to try to incorporate our half walls with uh, maybe some, something decorative, uh, maybe some translucent glass walls. And what this allows, it, it, it doesn't make it a dark room, but it breaks it up so you feel like you have some privacy. It also gives us flexibility that if we want to use this area for a big party, if somebody wants to say they have a, a, an anniversary and bring their family in, we'll be able to section it off and accommodate things like that. Um, right now there's one door right here that goes into the kitchen. We're going to make it two doors and we're going to move the soda and coffee station out here so our wait staff, they don't have to go into the kitchen to get you a coffee. They can just go right behind this wall, and everything they need will be right there so they can get it to you quicker um, and more efficiently, and they won't crash into each other when they're going into the kitchen. Bill, I have a question. Yes. Could you add some soft shades in the acorn room uh, so that people that sit facing the windows aren't blinded during dinner? So the suggestion is soft shades in the acorn room because it does get very bright. We're getting rid of the acorn room. Um, Go on. Go on. But all we're doing is moving out, so we'll have the same problem right here. So yes, yes, um, we'll make sure uh, when, when, so right now this is just the, these are the builders building this. We have um, the architect as a design firm that they work with. That's all they do are communities like this. So they're gonna come in and uh, we'll definitely incorporate those suggestions um, because it does get very right, you're right. Janice, you had a question. I just wanted to know if by any chance some of the bigger things like the culinary that you're getting rid of in the dining room, mm -hmm. are you gonna be able to revert, I mean, uh, sell that? So right here where this culinary center is in the dining room, we're gonna be able to have more seating. I know that, but that unit, what, will you be able to get rid of that or are they just gonna We're gonna, gonna so the, the, we will, we won't be able to reduce that. So the, the equipment there, we might be able to sell parts of it. That's a great idea. Um, of course, we'll do that if we can. But the other thing I was thinking, that big window in the south lounge on the second floor, is that going? So the question is the big window on the south lounge on the second floor. Um, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. There'll still be a big window there. The specific one that's there now will probably be gone and it'll, it'll shrink but there'll be an outdoor access to an outdoor patio in, on the second floor of the North Lounge, or the South Lounge, South Lounge. You couldn't sell that window, could you? I don't know if we can sell the window. Okay. Um, I want to keep on some of the amenities, okay. Uh, the Bistro will also um, take on a different look. The round culinary center is going to disappear. It's, it's kind of lost its usefulness because of the way it's designed. It's neat looking. Instead, we're gonna have a teaching kitchen. So this will have seating along this counter. It'll be, it won't be, right now we have um, countertop seating with a bar height behind it. You can't see what they're doing. 
we're going to make it so that you can actually see what they're preparing for you, and we'll be able to have bring people back to the teaching kitchens all over again. Um, we're going to incorporate. I think this is a picture of a um, a salad bar, a portable salad bar. Um, one of the communities had one, and it wasn't one where you serve yourself. It's one where staff serves you. It'll be a little more high end with more things available. So if you just want a nice salad, we can have uh, one of our servers prepare for you right there, and then you can take it back or bring it to your table. And if we need this space for a bigger event, we can wheel it out of there. So that was that was one of the things that was very popular. Yes, Mr. Beach. Uh, following up on the previous question, uh, I guess this is going to have some impact on accessibility of the commons area to the current apartment arrangements in terms of uh, doors, hallways, things like that, mm -hmm. number one. Uh, number two, people on the ground floor may have access to a parking lot now, or a view now, or something like that. Are we going to get some sense as to how much our exterior environment is going to change, number one, and number two, the presumption is that our interior, our apartments as they exist today, stays the same way. And perhaps number three, if people are unhappy with those, um, I almost am reluctant to raise this, but suppose some people would like to change their current apartments to the new apartments. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a consideration? Okay, there's a lot there. So what, what I'm going to so, so there was a few questions there about what's it going to, and I'm going to paraphrase, living in the construction. And what's going to be like because you're going to, your access to amenities is going to change. Your access to your apartment's going to change, perhaps depending where you live. Um, what if people want to move to a new unit? So I'm going to try to unpack all that with kind of a broad answer. When you do a project like this, um, we've brought in folks who've done this before, and they are well aware that you live here. For example, we did a health center expansion back in 2019. Our most vulnerable, vulnerable population were impacted because of where they live and how they access what they need, more so than what our independent folks need right now. And with that, they were able to stage it in ways that, yes, they're getting from here to there may involve a hallway. Like, if you've ever been to New York City and you have to walk under scaffolding, I'm not saying it's going to be scaffolding, but they'll be able to make temporary walls and hallways to get you from here to there so that they can keep working on the sides. So it will be different, and I'm, I mean, let's, let's be realistic, it's going to be uncomfortable for a little while, probably for a, a lengthy period of up to two years, um, where folks, the folks in the South are not going to be walking in the way they're used to walking in. It'll be on, on an angle a little bit. You'll still be able to get through that. There may be a day where they shut it down because they have to work on something, but they'll still provide access. Um, you'll be walking through a construction zone, it won't be nice carpeting, and and painted walls and, and artwork, it'll be a little different for a short time, but you'll still have the access. <laughs> the truth is the people on the first floor will have it a little easier because they can get in and out of their patios. You can still get in and out on the second floor, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the same time, back to your, your last point, can you move to, um, to another unit? Um, you, you can move anywhere you want. Um, but it, I, you know, we're not encouraging all of that at once um, because we do have a, a significant number of people that are going to be on the list for the new units. Um, but it's always an availability to change apartments if you need to, and that would include the new ones. Wouldn't aren't they going to cost more than what we are in now? So we haven't ironed out the pricing yet more, but the reality is the newer ones are going to be priced at a price point that's a little higher than the existing. Um, just because they're new and we need to be able to, when you do a project like this, you want to fill up quickly. Um, so we're, gonna, we're, we're going to attract those people, we're going to let the outsiders have access to, to those new units, but they will be priced higher because they're getting something new, yes. So the new units go to new people? Uh, well, that's kind of how we envision it, but could people existing here move? They, they absolutely could, just like you could move right now. Um, but it's a lot of work to move somebody internally from one to another. And we're, one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be incorporating a, a move, a internal move fee. We're the only community that doesn't do that. 
because there's so much that gets involved with going from one to another. But that will be incorporated going forward, I think, at some point once the state approves it. I would have to think that down payments would go, you'd have to put additional down payment down on a new apartment and your monthly rent would be a little higher. So the point is folks moving in would, would have a, a larger down payment. If, okay. if, if okay. the entry fee is higher, it's going to be a higher down payment. And that's with any unit right now. And, and uh, but as for the pricing, the, the, uh, how all that's going to work, we're still at the phase where we're trying to design it. We need to get, and I'll explain where we're at today, we'll, we'll get past the town, and then the state is going to be the big hurdle for us. Who knew the town would be this much of a hurdle? Yes, Mr. Leonard. I have a few points. Uh, one is, uh, and most important, I hope there's a bigger bar. <laughs> yes, the bar's going to be bigger. Yes, we said 14 people and everybody's standing around waiting. And by that time, our hour is over. So, and then second is, how come you can't get an architect in Buffalo you're going to go to Connecticut? I was just going to answer. <laughs> I think I got one other. Okay, well, let me address that more while you think of your other one. So, um, yes, the bar will be bigger. We're going to accommodate more people. It'll be a little easier to sit there. We're going to focus on counter height instead of bar height, because that, that, that's a big deal. So why, when we do a project, do we reach out to folks outside of Western New York? Well, there's a number of reasons. Um, our focus is on experience and um, and, and a focus on community like Fox Run. We did incorporate a builder who's local. So our development company wanted larger firms in the Rochester area. We insist on Lehigh Construction, which is down the street. And um, I think Matt said it best, because Lehigh did our health center expansion, did a great job. If I have a problem, Bill, I can go down the street and get them to come over and look at it. And that's exactly our goal. Plus, we want to keep business here as much as we can. So the builder and the subs are all from, from this area, specifically, or mainly Orchard Park. The architect is the architect is from Connecticut, and they built a lot of what Canterbury Woods has today. So they do have experience in this area, they just have to be located somewhere else. I can get a hold of the architect via Zoom, I can call him, he, he's been here several times. So their location really doesn't matter. What matters to us was their experience. All they do are CCRCs. So when we, and when, when we brought them in, um, his name is Patrick Mixdorf. So Patrick isn't looking to do something flashy so he can show it in his portfolio. He's here working on what all of you need. In fact, they were involved in determining we're going to do wings off our existing building rather than go into the wetland, assuming we could, because he's well aware that traveling distance from the commons to your apartment is so important than you getting in your car and drive. It's great for folks in the patio homes, but a lot of you really need to be in, in the building. So we're, gonna, we're keeping the wings where they're at. Um, so experience was so important to us, um, and, and they have plenty of it, and this is all they do. But again, they do have experience from Western New York. Do you remember your other question? Yeah. <laughs> well, I still have a lot of slides to show, so think of it, and I'm going to get to the next one. Um, oh, Peg, did you have a question? Yeah, on that last slide, where's, where's the connecting hall? The existing connecting hall. As that dining room goes out. Okay, so the question is where's the existing connecting hall? So here is the dining room. The hallway goes like this on this side of it, and the breezeway it continues out that way. So Koi Pond is right here. Is there any land between that extension and the connecting hall, or does it become more? So, any land between the... You know where the hedges are against that window? Remember how we talked about the roof that was going to have? They're still trying to decide what to do with those bushes that are between, because they're still there. So that may turn into dining space. We don't know yet. Um, Bill? Yes. I came from the Park Lane condominiums. OK. And I had a very beautiful condominium there. And I kept it all historic and worked mm -hmm. with it. 
Many of the people who buy those condominiums, they're extremely expensive, um, decide that the kitchen has to go from one end to the other and they have to gut the whole thing and turn it into a highly modern condominium. So I have experience with living in a space where people are constantly, I mean constantly, doing um, building and rebuilding and mm -hmm. digging and hammering and whatever. And I know my recent place here cost the person underneath me, who was a very sweet, patient lady, some unpleasant days because they had to use an air hammer to dig out a very ugly thing. Um, are you going to really put the screws to the canals to get this done ASAP? And are they going to have limited hours during which they work so the rest of us can live here in some peace and quiet? That is a great question. So the question is, is how long is this gonna take? And we know it's gonna be loud and we know it's gonna be dirty. So how are we gonna make sure that they get their butts moving so that we're not living in this environment for a long period of time? We had a phasing meeting with, um, with Lehigh and with our architect and our developer, and we talked about how this is gonna be staged. And the original phasing meeting showed, um, we're gonna start with this wing, and a month later we're gonna start with that wing, and a month later we're gonna start with the third wing. And then when those are done, then we're gonna start with the amenities. And we didn't love that plan because it stretched the project out over potentially four years. I know. Um, one of the things I really wanted to do was get the amenities done first because all of you are going to be realistically living in a construction zone, so we want to give you something new that, to enjoy. So we asked if they could run them concurrently, and they're going to. We're choosing, rather than a long approach with less dust, to a rip the band-aid off approach and shrink it to a two-year period. Anything can happen. You can dig up and the ground over here and find something you didn't expect and it's gonna take it from two years to two years and two months. But the plan is it will be staged in a way where you're not starting everything on day one, but you're starting it over a period. But the hope is that it all completes within that two years. So yes, we will be pressing them to get it done quickly. But at the same time, in order to do that, they're going to be working an extended period of hours. But we tried to make it clear. You can come in at 7 a.m. and start doing your prep work, but if you're going to do something that creates noise, you have to wait until after 9 a.m. because folks want to still sleep and they live here. They were very good at this process when they did our health center. In fact, you can put up all the plastic and, and, and temporary drywall barriers that you want, you're still going to get dust and dirt. So what they did was, um, every night they brought in a clean crew who cleaned up the areas, the common areas, so that all of you can walk through. And then the next day they'd make it dirty again. So we're asking them to do that again. We're asking them to get the work done quickly, but also be very conscious of the folks, conscious of the folks that live here. I can't promise that there won't be a day where an overzealous subcontractor wants to get his work done and he starts making noise. If that happens, which it did in our health center, we will talk to the project manager, who uh, his name back then was Bill Baker, and he would, I've seen him yell at people to say, you can't do that anymore, and he scolded them, and they've even kicked out subcontractors because of it, and said, you need to bring in a new crew. So we're very conscious of this is your home, and you're gonna be putting up with a lot for, for a period of time. Um, I spoke to the CEO of Jefferson Ferry who just went through an expansion twice this size. And I said, how did it go, Bob? He goes, oh, it was terrible. <laughs> he said, but it was worth it. And I would do it all over again. So those, those words do mean a lot. We're hoping that, that that's gonna be the case here. So let me just keep moving forward on some of these, some of these designs. I talked, what is, I, Talked a little bit about the dining. Now let's let's work our way down to uh, the event center. I, I, I mentioned we're gonna have a stage here. Walk down this hallway, you have your fresh market here. This is the entrance to some some card tables, the library, which I'll show you a picture of in the inside in a second. 
Um, this will be all glass. There'll be bookshelves below it and on the walls, and there'll be a computer area here. Okay, so this is, again, where the pool table is now. Walk down the hall. No longer fire doors. Here's your seating. Fireplace. This is the larger bar for Mr. Leonard. <laughs> this is the pool table here. Theater. This is something new that's very popular with communities that are expanding or even new communities, a golf simulator. <laughs> we visited one place that had, there's a countertop bar right here, so you can sit and heckle your neighbors as they hit golf balls, or for your children and grandchildren, there'll be comfortable seating over here. This is the hallway that goes to the new wing, which just goes out this way, and it's not just for golf, we can connect it to other things kickball, wee bowling, whatever you like to, to, to do, this is meant to be entertaining and draw people to the area. All right, so let's, dining, I'm, I'm just gonna skim through some of these. I already showed you um, the, the teaching kitchen here and, and what the, the dining expansion is gonna look like up here. Here's that beautiful shade of tan. This will be the teaching kitchen, so it's, it's, it's You'll be able to sit countertop here and see what's going on. Um, the back side of this will be where the soda fountains are. And this is just a big open area of the dining room without the separation. So you can see the dining room is going to go out this way farther and it'll be a view to the patio where we're still going to have patio seating. Um, this is kind of weird. It's kind of boxy. It's hard. It's kind of hard to see. This is the fresh market, so you'll be able to, this is the walking in, this back corner will be where it'll be staffed. So now this view is where the staff are, are sitting. Those are the doors to get in. This will be, you can get some salads or sandwiches. This middle countertop will probably have breads. There'll be a hot well over here where you can get soups. This wall will be dry goods, cereals, canned goods. Um, again, it'll be like a small store. Is there going to be an attendant? Yes. Okay. Yes, so th that will be staffed. But at some point, we may move to a scenario where you can use a key fob or your badge, and you'll be able to catch yourself out like you do at the top of my hands right now. And we're going to trust you. Uh, this, this is a blow-up of... It looks so good on my screen. You can kind of see, again, we've talked about this in the market. You can see a little better how the pub's going to look and the flow of traffic. I'm excited about this theater. So years ago, I told Mike Maloney, I said, let's have a theater someday. And he goes, where would you put it? And I said, right where Nicole, Nicole wasn't here at the time, Nicole's <laughs> office is, because we can go out in that space. And here we are today. We're finally going to get that theater. <laughs> Now this is that beautiful gray or beige that we keep talking about. This is really hard to see. You know, maybe what I'll do now is now I'll go to the actual slideshow and see if this is easier to see. Oh, that right. Thank you for the lights. Okay, so this is the bar. So now you're standing next to the bar and you're looking out. Here's the seating, the fireplace, golf simulators over here. You can't really see it, but that's the marquee for the theater. This is the entrance to the bistro. So this is from the bar, and this is from standing behind. So this is where Dennis is going to stand, and he'll be able to see all of you. There's a ghost right there. There's regular chairs there. Regular chairs where? At the bar. Not bar stools. Not bar stools. Right. These are actually countertop. They're not full bar. Good. They're, they're going to be lower. So you get yes. Yeah, so this will be a lower level, um, and then we poor Dennis has to reach over so much stuff to to get you your drink. It's going to be much easier now. So we took all those details into into account. And this we expect people sitting here all the time, whether the bar is open or not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I think I gotta, gotta be careful how I phrase things. Bring your own. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so this it, this view here is you're walking down this hallway out here toward the pool table. So these glass doors are to get into the card room toward the library. This is the um, the marquee for the um, for the theater. The bars over here, um, fireplace, and access. Those are the new fire doors right next to the wood shop heading toward our health center. Another view, this is work from the golf simulator, looking at the pub and the seating and the pool table right there. And you kind of have to use your imagination a little bit. It's hard really to, to, to get a feel for it. This is walking, this is a little narrower than it's going to be, but this is walking into the card room. Bookshelves, there's the glass rotunda. Here's another view of the rotunda um, of the library. Bookshelves on the back, there'll be bookshelves on the bottom. And then there's an entrance to where the computers are going to be. Bill? Yes? Will the size of the library be as it is now? So it's hard to say. My opinion is, is it's going to be a little bigger. Um, it should be comparable. Okay. You already saw this view. Administrative offices. I know the most important thing that you're all worried about is where are we going to sit? <laughs> Thank you for laughing, whoever that was. <laughs> all right, so this is the second floor right now. Here is the card room. Here's the library. Um, shuffle boards right here. Here's Lori's office, and there is the greenhouse. And there it is again. This is what it's going to look like. And this is where I'm going to have to oh boy, zoom out of here so I can zoom into that. It's coming out of your paycheck. Your device ran into a problem. That's not good. <laughs> Let's pause and see what happens. I've never seen this before. Where's Joe? She's gonna What's it say? Your device ran into a problem. What are you doing? Okay, well upstairs, upstairs, you want to turn the lights on? We'll see what happens here. It's only a couple more slides anyway. Um, but upstairs in the existing card room and library, there's going to be a horseshoe entrance and exit um, of offices. We're going to go out onto that Patio, that's, has anyone looked out of the doors and windows? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, the wall's going to go out there a little bit, probably more than halfway. And then we're going to have um, all marketing is going to be upstairs, their offices, finance, accounting, um, payroll is going to be all up there, IT is going to be up there, Killian will be up there, my office is going to be up there, our CFO is going to be up there. Uh, where the shuffleboard table is right now, that's going to be Lisa's office, so dining is going to be up there as well. And Lori's wellness office is going to turn into our boardroom. Um, so we'll have a table, so we'll have board beams up there rather than in your creative arts room. Uh, yes, the greenhouse will still be there. And, um, and, but we'll have all, all what we need up there. There'll be storage. Um, and one question that was asked at our neighborhood luncheon, you got it. <laughs> you know, I probably, I probably don't need it. Um, it depends who's coming up the stairs. <laughs> don't worry about that. Yeah, don't worry about it. So, yeah, uh, just, just one more thing. I'm just trying to think of what I need to say about the upstairs. Um, one of the questions that came out during Friday Coffee Hour was, now you're going to be stashed away, are we going to have access to all of you? And um, you're, it, we're, I'm going to encourage the entire team to get out of your office and go see people. Um, it's not for everyone. Like So for example, Tabitha, who I talked about today, is very shy. She's excellent at what she does. She's very sweet. She may not be one who's going to walk around like Melissa did. It depends on personality, but we will encourage all of our, our team from upstairs. Marketing's up there, so they're going to want to come downstairs as well and spend more time 
Um, once we have less of a project to work on, we'll be able to come in and walk through the dining room and, and the bistro and still walk the halls and make sure everyone has what they need. And if we're not, you need to call us out on it. Yes, Alona. It was exactly my question. Since I've moved here, one of my delights has always been running into all of you and getting to know you, chat with you. That was exactly my question. You guys are going to disappear, and it's nice that you're going to encourage people to We do will. It, and but then, I don't know how that's going to go. So the thing is, if we actually may have more access to us now, because right now, Pamela's the gatekeeper, and she will not let you through. Um, <laughs> And, but we also need our space as well to get what we need done. So that, which is why we locked that door, which outside of Allison's office, because people are coming in and out, and, and we need to, we need our space as well. But at the same time, we need to get out. So proximity-wise, the distance is going to be the same. We have a flight of stairs that will make it a little more challenging. But um, think of it this way: it'll be easier to come downstairs and see you, and then we'll be too tired to go upstairs. So then we'll stay down here more often. Yes, Jan. Uh, my question is, if Orchard Park changes their restrictions on two and a half stories and allows you to go higher, will you change any plans, or are you frozen in this? I area? think we're frozen in this one. Okay. So the question is, um, and then I'll get into where we are today with the town. The town rejected our three-story plan, which is going to be exactly what you looked at, to two and a half. We have to commit to two and a half now. Unless they reject that, then we'll go back to three and fight them in court, but we don't want to, to follow that path. Um, it'll be too late, because we are, so our plans are already in design development. What that means is you create schematic design. That's some of these pretty pictures that we looked at. How is it going to look? And then we give it to Lehigh. Lehigh goes through design development where they're actually pricing it out. The hope is by the end of this summer, we're into, um, guaranteed maximum price contract area, or now we're, we're, we're committed to, to that design. Um, what you've seen today, it may change in certain areas, because right now our budget, we're over where we need to be, and we may, we're looking at getting better pricing. Um, it may mean, we hope it doesn't, cutting some things out, um, because we, you don't want to go halfway with things. I mean, all of you spend quite a bit of money to live here, and we want, we want to give you the best of what we can um, with, with the assets that we're going to get from this. Mr. Leonard. Okay. I finally remember what I was going to ask you. Uh, you lost it again. Uh, maybe you're looking back. Oh, no. Oh, but, uh, I had another question. Oh, the gym. Yes, the gym. The gym. Where did the mobs go? There's a lot of equipment in there. <laughs> Yes, there is. I don't know how much use we get out of each of those pieces of equipment. They're very large pieces of things, mm -hmm. and uh, I would I would run a survey to see how many people use each of those pieces of equipment, so that you'll have a better idea on what will stay, what might go, or what you might need. So the point was, right now there's a lot of equipment in the fitness center that appears like it's not being used. And if we're going to buy new equipment, how do we know what all of you want? Um, and, and do we do a survey? We actually did a survey. And, um, and we've actually worked with Becky to talk to everyone individually that, that she'll pick and choose some people, what gets used a lot. And with that, we're going to incorporate what other communities are currently using. Sometimes you don't use the equipment there because it's dated and it's not the right equipment. Um, if we get something better, more folks may use it. We also have to predict what the next wave are gonna, are gonna need. So all that's been thought out as we're, we're in the process of purchasing that equipment and we fill that space. Part of the reason why it's not being used is because the space is so small, there's a class going on. So if you wanna go use the treadmill and just take a walk, you can't because Becky has a drumming class and it's awkward. So that's why we're separating the space. We're going to get new equipment. And one of the questions, oh, this is, this is a good point. Um, one of the questions I asked the other communities who got this her equipment, they all had the same six pieces. And I said, which ones don't you use? Right away, they said, that one and that one, we don't use at all. So we're going to go back to them and find out why it's not being used. And we're not going to buy it, because it doesn't, don't buy it just to buy it, because it's pretty. 
when we visit these communities, it wasn't all about what cool things do you have that we might want. What does everyone like? We also asked, what don't you like? I'll give you an example. I gave this to the past few um, neighborhood luncheons. I go to conferences um, with other communities like Fox Run, and, and then you have vendors that show the flashy new thing. Robots was a big thing. A dining room robot. And I actually, I was in Chicago last fall after after the uh, uh, the marathon, and they had one serving desserts. It was really cool. Um, and I said, "Wow, I really want that. That'd be great. Get a press release, tell the world we have a robot." We went to McLean, and it was the name of the community, and they had one sitting in their dining beautiful dining venue, absolutely beautiful. And I said, oh, you have a robot? And I asked the CEO, and she said, don't get one. It's a waste of money. <laughs> she said, it just sits there. Nobody uses it. They walk around it. It's actually in the way. So sometimes you, you ask what doesn't work rather than what's shiny and new, and then you get great feedback. So we can avoid that. Because to be honest, once we're done with this project, we're going we're gonna to have a list of things that we shouldn't have done or that were a waste. It happened with our health center. You know, we had some great ideas, and now it's space we need to reorganize into something else. There's a private dining room in our house in our brand new wing that is dining storage now. So that should tell you something. Uh, yes? I was at UB when they built a new campus. Yes. And one of the things that everybody touted was the wonderful um, windows and that we'd be able to see everything. And there was so much light, they put up plastic, uh, plastic over the windows, then they put lines over the windows, then they put shades over the windows, then nobody wanted to use those rooms because it was like it would be an x-ray, especially during the winter when the sun is low. Right. Um, if I would encourage you to think about it. So that was a great point. And these are all the little things that we need to think about that I love the phrase, you don't know what you don't know. And, and the point was, um, at, at, at UB, you have these beautiful rooms with a wall of windows. Well, then they become unusable because it's too hot. Uh, one of our conference room in our new health center, we had beautiful windows. And uh, we have our, our morning report meetings on Monday mornings. And it's so hot in there, the shades have to come down for the same reason. So I'd rather have windows and then kind of dim them a little so you do have access to that light again rather than just have a wall. But we do need to think about stuff like that. So thank you. That's a great point. Let me just go back to... I'm not on here anymore. Uh, do you have to mirror? I was going to do Okay. Do I do that? Okay. Uh, yes? Bill, uh, every time you talk about stuff, new stuff... Yep. I think the most important thing that my husband and I have noticed about this place is the people. Mm -hmm. And so the stuff really doesn't matter. <laughs> and, and if everybody who's working on this stuff keeps in mind the people here. That is a wonderful point. I'm so glad you made it. The point was, we talk about stuff. I'm showing you shiny new pictures. That's not the important thing. The important thing is the people. One thing I've said from the beginning, and I'm glad, I'm glad, glad you pointed that out, our goal as a leadership team, as a board, is to keep the culture that we have today. There's a reason Fox Run is so successful. It has nothing to do with the leadership. It's all of you, right? So it's, there's a special feeling when you come in the door. I hear it all the time. Canterbury was beautiful. We love it. Don't tell, them talk, don't tell Rob I'm talking about him. But it doesn't have the same feeling you have at Fox Run. Our, our goal is to keep that. It really is. Realistically, if we we're, there's going to be a, a month where 30 people move in in a month, and you're going to infuse all new personalities into our campus. It'll be a whole new neighborhood. So they're kind of we we're already seeing predicting they're going to group together because they're moving in at the same time. That happened when we started Fox Run, and those pioneers are still here, and those pioneers created a culture that has now moved down generation after generation with all of you. And we're going to be leaning on you to help keep that culture. We're going to do our best to keep it from our side, but we need you as well, um, because we don't want to lose that. Adding numbers, I have to look at this as a business because it is. 
And the reality is we have to do these things to, to be viable for the long term. But we have to find that balance, and, and I'm very conscious of it, because I love coming to work every day um, because of the culture. And I, want all, I don't want any of you, and, and the reason it's so popular, we have 80 deposits because of this culture. So we need to keep that, because that's just as important, and that's a great point. It's not just the shiny things, it's all of you. And I'm not just focused on the people that are coming in, I'm focused on you first, and then the new folks moving in. Mr. Leonard, remember this question. <laughs> Soil scientist here. Yes. Don and myself. Yes. And Don, I know I'd like to volunteer. It's time to help. And, and uh, wetlands and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could have problems. I mean, you're going to have problems with that. And maybe we can help. And there's a, it is a certain practice that if you want to use a wetlands and it's restricted, you may be able to do a project somewhere else. Great. Change. Yes. So, um, great point. We do have a couple. It's not just we have two soil scientists. We have a roof row full of brilliant people with backgrounds that we can lean on. Um, and, and your point was, someday we can use the wetlands by doing a trade-off. Scott Beeler had told me he's working on a project. He goes, you can use wetlands. You can make a huge donation to Ducks Unlimited, and they will give somebody, that's the name of the company, they, they, will, they will give, expand the wetland somewhere else and shrink yours. It's kind of funny how it works, but he said consider that we did, and that process will take so long we wouldn't be starting for probably eight years. Um, but the point is, there's some great minds here, and I'll give you an example. I'm, we're in a budget process now with, with the builder. And I'm leaning a little bit on, on the, the uh, building committee. Um, I don't want to give you any names, but Mr. Bear's been very helpful with <laughs> explaining to me how the, the, um, the contingency works between schematic design and then shifts to design development and shifts to the GMP process. These are all things that made no sense, that meant nothing to me. But his experience and his knowledge were leaning on a little bit. And, and we're, we're and, and I had a conversation this morning about, about uh, what the dining room is going to look like and the color scheme and, and the layout. And the, the truth is that we are going to rely on, on our, um, the folks that we're paying and hiring to come and design this. But at the same time, we're going to be dropping you know, some, some thoughts say, hey, what do you think about this? We did it with throughout the campuses we've renovated over the years. Um, I know Janice is an example. We walked by, and, and is there anything you really don't like about Fox Run? Because it was Janice's idea. We, we we picked her, and she said, "I like that color. I like that that carpeting." Um, I'm just kidding, picking on her a little bit. But we are we are we are leaning on on your experience a little bit too, because you know a lot more than I do. Which one of those is your office? Oh, let me zoom in on it. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna show me. Oh, there you are. All right, so, whoops. Oops. How did that work? All right, so this is upstairs. And this is Lori's office that's going to be a boardroom. This is a shuffleboard that's um, Lisa's office. And you can see, um, oh, I, let me undo. Let's do that. So you can see this wall will be marketing staff, this will be an entrance to the greenhouse, um, there's my office, CFO. The patio currently is at this line, yeah. it's going to go out, we'll still have access to a smaller patio. Um, this order isn't necessarily how it's going to be, um, but there's going to be between IT and accounting, it will be here and right here, executive assistant, copy storage, we actually will have a break room upstairs which will be nice. And then, I just love how they call it toilet. They could have said restroom. But I guess that's what it is. Okay, so what have we done, what have we done so far? Um, I told the story that we applied to the, the Town of Orchard Park. Um, zoning board, board of Appeals for a third story. That was denied. We shifted to our two and a half story design. We tried getting in the January and February meeting, but for some reason, there's a roadblock. Um, we had to pull some strings, and I had to talk. 
Um, George talked to our, our mayor. I spoke to the town supervisor. So we got into a, a um, March meeting where we, we presented a concept review. So we didn't give them plans. We showed them what I showed you today and said, this is what we'd like to do with two and a half stories. Can we move forward with a submission? And the town board, every one of them overwhelmingly said yes. As long as it complies with code, Fox Run is a great community, a success story, we're happy you're part of it. It was wonderful. It was shocking because they they crushed the dreams of so many people in the groups before us. I couldn't believe they were so nice to us. So then our plan was to get on the next board, planning board meeting agenda, which should have been last week, and we were not invited. So now we have to go back and pull those strings again. And, and there's somebody in the process that's holding it up, and I don't understand why, but we have to have patience and stay positive. Um, we should have, our hope was to, to um, have this approved by now, by the town. We can't go to the state until we have town approval, a finalized um, GMP, which is Guaranteed Maximum Price Contract with our, our, our builder. We have to have financing in place. And then we can go to the New York State Department of Financial Services where they will sit on it for hopefully only six months, but up to a year and a half. Complicating all of this, there is legislation proposed right now where we're going to make the state more efficient when it comes to CCRCs. So instead of reporting to DOH and DFS, we in our lobby group are proposing we only report to DOH. What does that mean for us? I don't know, because DOH could double their, their, their time limit as well. But we should know by the time the budget's approved whether or not we report to DFS anymore. There's a chance we won't have to. Could help us, could hurt us, but it's just a dynamic that's just, just gonna change things. And you think of things around the world today. Um, I was talking to Dave Knauss yesterday, and he said, Bill, you know, it's hard to pin down a number because you never know what's gonna happen in the world. Saudi Arabia could have a problem, oil prices go up, all of your materials go up because shipping costs to get those here. There's so many variables that my hair will never grow back. <laughs> Our next steps, we hope to get approval for the two and a half story design. And um, so we're gonna to go to the main meeting. If we're invited, I was told they're 90% certain we'll be invited to it. Um, if we get there, our hope is then we get to the June meeting because they never say yes right away. They, they give you some things to think about so you can come back. And then once we get it approved, then we start the application process with New York State's um, DFS. Hopefully we can secure financing in early 2025 and we can start building in early, also in early 2025. The reality is we're probably on target for aggressively late spring, early summer of 2025, completion sometime probably late summer of 27, if things go well. And we'll see how that goes. Some things could speed up, some things could slow down. There's a lot of unknown. Um, but I, it, I just want to make it clear that, that it is, it's weighing on our shoulders that we know you're going to be living in this. And I want to be realistic and I want to set expectations that you're going to be seeing cranes when you come into your beautiful campus. You're going to see bulldozers and equipment. There'll be lots of people coming in. We will make sure, oh, this is a great example. With our health center expansion, there was a, uh, some guys that came in, they were swearing the entire time. They were asked to not swear anymore. And they were kicked out by Lehigh because they were too vulgar. That actually happened. So we went, this is your home. We're gonna be tearing up your home and hopefully making it better. Any other questions for me? Janice, you went up first. Is the town approach you about the in lieu of taxes? to talk about before this project's finished? So the question is, did the town talk about in lieu of taxes? So as a not-for-profit, we don't pay taxes, but guess what, we pay taxes. Yeah. It's called a pilot agreement. It's payment in lieu of taxes. So right now, this year, we're probably paying $700,000 in taxes that we're not supposed to pay, and it's tied to our public financing. So as we finance this new project, we really don't renegotiate that old pilot agreement. We'll probably have a second pilot agreement that goes, if we go through the ECIDA, which is a whole other mess we hope not to, um, then, but if we do that, then um, we'll probably be another pilot agreement we're paying more taxes. Okay. 
Kathy? Yes. Um, it, uh, well, getting around here, there are several doors where it is very difficult for people to enter or exit because they have a walker right. and they have to stop, put the walker aside, open the door, try to go through, carry the walker. Is that going to exit and be put into the old the new building too? So the question was, um, right now there's a lot of heavy doors that are hard to open and close. And that came to light during one of our neighborhood luncheons. And right now Matt is working on a plan to take care of the existing doors by the cut through to make those powered with a button. It's very expensive to wire those and, and then to add it, but it's a necessity. So that was loud and clear. Yes, we will incorporate that because um, you know it's easy when somebody designs it who doesn't have a walker. But then when you try to put to navigate it, and you swipe your card outside, and by the time you get ready and push you open, it's locked already. So um, all of those are, are, are in part of our discussions as, as, as we build the new building. Are you considering doing anything to the ones that are private? Yes. So the question is, are we going to do anything to some of the existing ones? Yes. Uh, I've tasked Matt to start the process of the doors going through the cut-through. Because um, those, I think, sound like the worst ones right now. And it's not just the outer door, it's the door on the inside as well. That one's really tough, right by the stairwell. <laughs> yes, Mary Pat. Do you know who's holding things up? Because I know people. <laughs> <laughs> I do know who's holding things up. And, um, I'll talk to you later. You can talk to me later. We, actually, as part of the neighborhood, this neighborhood luncheon has been brilliant, by the way, because I did just meet somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that um, yeah, is, know. is going to get to the bottom of it. And then you have to be delicate, too. I mean, I don't just want to say, this guy's nasty and he's not helping us out. Because if you start pushing this guy from, from Mary, you said you sick Mary Pat on him. Well, now, one of two things, one of two things could happen. He says, I'm afraid of Mary Pat, you can have whatever you want. Or he's going to say, how dare you? And he's going to firm his stance. And it'll make it worse. So we have to be, you, you have to be very delicate. I reached out to one particular gentleman, and I really wanted to explain to him what my thoughts were. But my email was, thank you so much for taking the time to consider us. Anything you need, you please let me know. We're here at, uh, at your mercy, whatever. Yeah, I was very kind, because you have to be. It, it's... You know, it, it doesn't matter who the people are, they, they don't want you to, if, once you get aggressive, it changes the dynamic of everything, so we have to be careful of that. Why did you take them out? Wow, that's aggressive. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat what she just said, because it's illegal. All right, any other questions for me? So, we will... As I know more, I will keep you up to date. So I'd love to be able to do one of these again, um, once we have better pictures. And, um, and be able to just share how things are gonna go. I'm gonna, we're gonna put a couple renderings out back where the old ones were with those, the pictures of what two and a half stories look like, so you can check that out. And um, any questions you have, don't hesitate to come and ask me. Um, Allison's a great resource as well. Um, Melissa Metlack, she's, I'm, I'm, she's gonna be more and more involved in this process. She'll be able to answer whatever questions right away or at least come to me. We have a whole team working on this. Matt's very involved, Jill's very involved, Mary Lou, all of us have a piece of this. So um, please, I welcome your questions because things you bring up, we have incorporated already. So thank you for your time and sorry that it took so long to go through this.